Hey everybody, it's Monday, and you know what that means. It's time to raid my lab. Man, I don't know that the bench has ever been more full than it is right now. And so uh, I'm going to push some more things into view and maybe I'll clear off a little bit of space and then we will get started. But the, before we do, the one thing I want, if you get nothing else out of this video, it's that basically anything can be an enclosure if you want it to be. And it's really easy to go and buy, you know, these standard project boxes and they're cheap. You know, like a box like this is maybe a dollar. This is right around the same price. Um, and they're good and you can take them there. This is one I was playing with on the CNC, but like you can stick your electronics in there. You can, you can make a, a nice, somewhat professional looking project out of it. But as makers, I want to encourage you to get creative. And so we're going to look at some other things that could possibly be enclosures and hopefully give you some encouragement. Now, obviously, I had the laser cutter to make this Raid My Lab button, and uh, that's cool, but that wasn't my original plan. I didn't, I didn't have the laser cutter when I first thought of this series, and so I went to the dollar store, and the plan was to put it in this. And not a giant fan of purple, and I feel like the top is a little cheap on it, but it was a buck and would have served the purpose. So you don't need a two, $300 laser cutter to make an enclosure when you can buy a dollar box from Dollar Tree and there's a slightly bigger version of it for the same price. What's in this one? Oh, that's where my hose at. Okay, so getting on to some of the smaller ones, this is just a little enclosure that the, uh, I think it was a chain tool. I'm a, I ride bikes and there was like a little, it's cool like anodized aluminum um, enclosure that had a tool in it and so could make a very cool, basically free project box because it came with another part. These two things are another idea I've come up with and I've used from time to time and this is the old power supply from my Roomba and this is from I think it's an old laptop power supply maybe an old external hard drive power supply but I just ripped the guts out and all of a sudden you have a box that has two nice clean notches on the side for running wires and putting connectors and all that kind of stuff and you can get a little spot for an LED and I mean, it's basically free. This is something I pulled off of something that was getting thrown away. Along those same lines, I have absolutely no idea what this is. I think it came from a yard sale and it might be something for a vape or something. I don't know, but it was a, uh, it was basically one of those free boxes people do sometimes at a yard sale and just another nice, I think that's a hard plastic. At first I thought it was metal. This is kind of like a a fake chrome coating and some of that, but just another cool thing that you could build a unique project in. Okay, so we're gonna knock out a couple of these at once. I am a big fan of yard sales and just getting stuff cheap. This one, it says $4.99, but I don't think I paid that. I think I paid a dollar for this at a yard sale. But the cool thing, I mean, this is an actual metal um, box that my students use for, you can see they drilled some holes with a step bed in it. But um, the idea with this one is it was for an escape room that they built and you would, the, there would be some questions up on the screen and you'd have to push the answer up for true or down and down for false. And then when you got your guess, you would push this button and it would basically send true, false, 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 you know, like that. And then the computer would know whether you got the answers right or not. And what's cool about it is that because we did it this way, every single question could be unique for every group going through the escape room. And if they got it wrong, they would get a penalty and their time would 
decrease or or increase depending on how the game worked but it would basically be a penalty against them and then they would have to try again they'd flip some switches and then submit again if you still got it wrong you'd lose more time and uh so basically you know they just they put an arduino mega with a uh, uh an ethernet controller in there an ethernet shield and stripped out all the foam and drilled these little things in and you know little dabs of hot glue around the side to keep the ground wires and everything in place but I mean, I think I paid a buck for it, and uh, it's really cool. So along those lines, there's a couple more of those things. Anytime I get the opportunity, I, I paid a dollar or less for each of these, but same deal. This is one that hasn't had anything happen to it yet, so it's just a basic metal enclosure that it's nice. Like, you can make it easy to work on and, and all that kind of stuff. Another thing I like to do is take old consumer electronics. Like, this is a, a WD TV box, and it, it already has a cutout for Ethernet and some other things that you could put some uh, leds and stuff already has some some airflow but basically you know this is a set top box that i'm not using anymore it comes apart easy and it's perfect for a project box along the same lines i paid 20 cents for this at a yard sale this looks like it's from the the 70s it's a maybe in the 60s it's an avocado colored bell system so this used to be part of the telephone system and uh, it has a speaker in there and so the only thing it's missing is one little screw on the bottom but it, it has a speaker that looks like it's never been hooked up to anything so i'm going to take this apart and put something in it speaking of weird enclosures this thing has been some places this is a uh, an ammo box and um basically we had a game where we wanted to it was almost like a capture the flag type thing except it you needed to have, in order to capture the flag, you needed to have a special code to um, to be able to disable the bomb or whatever it was in the game. And so, if you, I'd say if you crack this open here, you know, you'd have to put the switches in different ways and use the, uh, the little keypad. And so, you know, you take it, you flip it up. The, the code on this game was 8511. And uh, there's a battery pack down there. That's actually a 20,000 milliamp hour battery pack. And so it was lasting I don't know, I mean, basically the whole summer, you didn't have to charge the thing at all. And uh, I had a little buzzer in there and all that kind of stuff. But just, you know, you you take, I, I didn't even destroy the can. I mean, I hot glued to the bottom. I hot glued these four studs in the corner. I uh, put like a little cheap piece of particle board up there. And as the Brits would say, Bob's your uncle. This is another one I haven't done yet, but... Um, Let's see, we might take it apart real quick. Let's see. Does it have? And it's got an Allen screw. I'm not going to worry about that right now. But basically, this is one of those little things that's made to sit underneath of an old school monitor and turn things on and off. And what I love about it is it has switched outlets in the back, has a built in circuit breaker, and basically all of this is empty. And so you can put all kinds of projects in here. You can tap into the power here. You can turn things on and off with the switches here and have a completely self-contained thing. I mean, you could have a Raspberry Pi and an Arduino in here and just do all kinds of stuff with this box. And it was a dollar at a yard sale with a giant cord. This is another project box. And the main reason why this is here is because I think if you go on Amazon and buy something like this, like you're getting in the six or seven dollar range to have something that is, uh, let's see, 15 to 20. So like, I don't know, six, uh, I don't know, six, seven centimeters long, or six inches long, seven inches long. Um, you know, you're gonna pay real money for a box like this when this was 50 cents at a yard sale. And so this has, obviously because it's just a, a switch, there's just a little, uh, maybe quarter inch hole sticking through there, but this is a real metal box And so you can use this as a switch and you can with this. This is a, a DB 25 connector. So you have You could basically switch 25 things at the same time or Not use those at all or just use it for the looks or whatever, but a dollar I Don't really have plans for this, but I have a couple of these old magic jacks when I lived in Mexico uh, these things were fantastic because you could just take it with you, put it in your computer, have a U.S. phone number. I brought them to Africa. And basically what I would do is every time I went somewhere, if I found somebody who I thought would benefit from it, I would just leave them my magic jack. So basically, you know, it would cost me, I think it was something like $40 a year to give someone in Africa or someone in America, in, uh, in Mexico, a U.S. phone number. And it's fantastic. 
but uh, it's not really needed anymore. So it's kind of a cool enclosure. You've got a male USB, you've got a female RGB or RJ11, and kind of a clear place to put a circuit board. So kind of a cool maker deal. So this, I'm going to do a whole separate video on this thing, but I wanted to make a laser tag game, and I actually did some really cool things. I mentioned it, I think it was in the last one, where um, I was playing around with boosting an LED, and so just to kind of, I'm not going to go over the whole thing, but there's a lens in front of this, but from an enclosure perspective, what's really cool is in here, you've got room to put a battery, like one of those little USB phone chargers, and then, I lost my drill, here we go, if I take this, crack this thing open you have a gasket and you know basically room to put an Arduino Nano and a, a little circuit board up here to deal with all the the uh, the trigger logic and eventually this was going to be an ESP32 but I this particular one has a Nano in it still because it's not connected but um, you know you've got a button down here and you know this is just a standard L connector for electricity I think this is one inch uh, one inch PVC so with something like this, I mean, you can drill holes in it, you can add uh, enclosures to the top and, and get a watertight seal, water-ish tight seal. And in this situation, like I could still take it apart. So the plan is to have some of these things that are connected where they can talk to each other. They're using ESP now. Uh, this is just one of the early prototypes. So I'll do a whole video explaining what I did here. Okay, a couple more. So something like this is really cheap. This is a dollar briefcase and uh, we had a Simon game. Uh, I've already played Simon a few times on the channel for different things. But basically my students made a, an internet connected Simon game and every time you made a mistake it was another part of an escape room challenge where if you made a mistake it would uh, give you a penalty and basically if you got it right it would pass you and stuff like that. So this is just one of the things they made out of a little briefcase. But the great thing about this, plenty of room really solid portable you can drill holes in it you got a little speaker got little led holders all that stuff start button right inside of a dollar briefcase and you know the thing is is anybody can buy a case like we could have spent 10 or 15 dollars on you know a, a project box but instead like this is just different okay so this is obviously not my best example of woodworking this is something i had to make on a Sunday night to have ready for Monday but basically what I did is you can see there's a little slot down there and when you open this up um, there's one of these little power door lock actuators and so when this thing gets power it pushes this which has a big washer on the end and I don't know if you can see that there's a uh, huh, there's a clothespin there and so basically what you can do is you can have something in the clothespin I usually would put like an RFID tag or something like that when this thing gets triggered it drops it and slides down this little slide and uh, yeah like if you look on this side there's like a little um, barrel jack thing to put power in there and, and basically that's what the that's how the thing gets its power so quick and dirty made out of scrap plywood but very functional so these two things are brand new um, this one I got for $2.99 at direct tools and basically it is a uh, an enclosure that has foam. I might show a video where my nephew and I made a um, we made a Raspberry Pi arcade system out of one of these. And I have another thing that my wife I did for my wife where there's a little light in here, and basically you have a set of buzzers or, or you know where kids can can come in and and buzz in for game shows. I made out of one of these Ryobi boxes, but they're cheap, three bucks. This one I got for two dollars at the yard sale, real similar to the last one. You know, little foam that you can pull out and stuff like that. But again, you're getting something that's waterproof or waterproof-ish. It will be by the time you would drill holes in it. And uh, yeah, so another cheap project box. This one I got for a dollar at a flea market, and it's not old. It's just made to look old. But basically, I don't know if you can see that in the the top but this is a game that they made where you have to push buttons and, and basically try to figure out a combination but you know that the first button if this one is is number one then this one has to be an even number and then this one has to be an odd number and you have to work your way through and every time you make a mistake you have to you lose and you, you get a penalty and then you have to start over but basically my students wired this and uh you know they they just uh 
Yeah, it was a, it's how they learned how to solder. They connected all these different wires and then there's really nothing to the bottom. It's just a bunch of LEDs kind of thrown in there. And uh, so a dollar project box with a couple of, these are little cabinet poles. This is pegboard, which I thought was a good idea for the students because the holes are gonna be somewhat lined up if they just chose which holes they were gonna use. Anyway, I think the point is basically that anything can be an enclosure if you try hard enough. I mean, you can spend a dollar on this or you can spend a dollar on this and this is upcycling something that's old and junky and, and it has a really cool rustic feel and this looks like a little piece of plastic and so both have their places but I really encourage you to go out there scrounge around see what you can find and make something cool